know this song, please, please join me in singing. anyone grateful for anything that God has done for you? Oh, come on. Is there anybody that God has done something for? You know, the song is right there. It just may be or could have been uh, you or me that could have been out there. And God saw fit. God saw fit in his grace and his mercy to spare a lot of us from the trouble that so many of our brothers and sisters are going through at this moment. Somebody say amen. Well, I want to introduce to you a very special guest. Uh, Rabbi Stan Levin is here with us tonight. He's going to share uh, some things that... Wh what happened? Oh, okay, got you here. Hold this. All right. Yeah, I, you know, I was supposed to introduce you. In my, uh, this is your mic. The, the powerful one is yours. No, no, here, here, let's switch. The powerful one is yours. Now, the powerful one is God. <laughs> I meant the I meant the mic. Oh, the, the mic. mic! You know, Elder Brown. Elder Brown warned us about you. He says that you were going to come and misbehave. 
Well, it's okay. It's perfectly all right. I want to introduce to you uh, Rabbi Stan Levin. He's a native of Washington. He serves as the, ra at the, as the rabbi at Riderwood, a senior living facility in Silver Spring, Maryland. Among his responsibilities are performing Sabbath and Holy Day services, as well as visiting the sick and giving lectures on the topics of Jewish interest. For the community at large, he performs life cycle events, such as weddings and funerals, primarily for families that are non-affiliated. He wrote his own translation of the Torah and the book of Psalms to make the meaning of the Hebrew and the poetic structures more accessible to non-Hebrew readers than current translations. Now that intimidates me because I failed Hebrew in the seminary twice, no once. Yeah, but how did you do in English? Well, I was an English major. All right. so that's okay. yeah, luckily that's what I speak. Yeah. <laughs> so when he said shalom, I said, man, that sounds like a Hebrew word, but I don't know any Hebrew. I only took it five times. He conducts classes on Torah study and lectures frequently on Jewish culture. Stan became a rabbi later in life, following a 30-year career as a federal employee. As a matter of fact, he was a co-worker of Elder Brown. Amen. So we're going to welcome to the stage, even though you're already here, we're going to welcome to the stage Rabbi Stan Levin, who will share with us his understanding of the Sabbath. Let's put our hands together Thank and you. welcome him. It's my honor to be here. Thank you. And Mark, thanks for uh, making the, uh, the match. <laughs> All right. Now, should I call you Stan or should I call you Rabbi Stan or? Stan works. Stan works. Okay. All right. Well, Stan, we want to thank you all for coming, or we want to thank you for coming to share with all of us. Um, uh, as you know, uh, this church is a Seventh-day Adventist church, and for some of our visitors, what that means is that means that we keep the Seventh-day Sabbath. And so when I was putting together this series, I thought to myself, well, why in the world would I talk to someone myself about the Sabbath? Why don't I find someone like yourself, a rabbi, to come in and sort of give us the Sabbath from its origins, from where it came from? So what I want you to do is I just want you to just share with us, you know, first tell us some more interesting things about you, if you'd like, well, and then you can go right on into it. Well, thank you. Uh, again, it's an honor to be here today. And there's a book called The Gifts of the Jews. And the author says that there were three gifts that the Jews gave the world. Number one, the belief in an invisible, all-powerful God. Anybody think that's a good gift? All right, so you're with me on that. The, the second is the Old Testament. And the third, which may be the most revolutionary of all concepts, and that is a day of rest, the Sabbath. And, you know, I was reading... You know, inside, I, I, I hope I didn't go off camera. I was reading inside of the Times. There's a great discussion of the Sabbath. So let's go to the origins of the Sabbath, and it goes to creation. Uh -huh. We're back in Genesis. All right, I'm going to teach you something. I'm going to teach you a little Hebrew, too. Is that all right? Yeah. First of all, every church I ever come to, I say, do you know, you all speak a lot of Hebrew, and you don't even know it. Are you ready? Give me a hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hebrew means... Praise God. Yeah, I know that one. That would, that would, right, praise God. Give me an amen. 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 That means I believe. Hebrew. And it's very interesting that no matter what translation of the Bible you read, no matter what language, hallelujah and amen are not translated into the other languages. Wow. They're kept in the Hebrew. So congratulate yourselves for being Hebrew speakers to begin with. All right? <laughs> so I'm going to teach you something that I learned from a, a rabbi, Rabbi Kasudo which I find very profound, and it'll help you teaching other people. If we look at the first six days of creation, are they in random order, or is there something going on? Right? So I'm going to teach you what Rabbi Kasuda wrote in his book, and I will share it with you. If we look at the first day of creation, God created light. Right? So we assume it's, you know, the Spirit of God hovered over the waters and darkness was on the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. It's the first spoken word in the Bible. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, what's very interesting, in the Bible it says, it was evening, it was morning, day one. In the Hebrew, it doesn't say first day. Right. The other days of creation, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day. Day one. Why is that day one not first day. Right. All right, I'm going to take you to Deuteronomy. All right, 
I'm going, to, I'm going to give you the translation from the Hebrew, Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. With me on that? So day one is the day God spoke. It's God's day. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Second day, God separated the waters above from the waters below. Right? Yeah. Third day, God created, drew the dry land out of the water. With me so far? Mm -hmm. Now, here's what Rabbi Casuto says. He says, those first three days of creation are really creating environments. The environment of light, the environment of the sky and the sea, and the environment of dry land with trees and grasses. These are environments. Now, if you look at it that way, then the fourth day, what's the fourth day? Anybody know? No wrong answers. The sun, the moon, and the stars, right? They fit the environment of light. Hmm. Yeah. Got it? Fifth day. If the second day is two environments, the, the sky and the sea, what would populate those environments? Birds and fish, right? Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Yeah. Sixth, third day is bring out the dry land, trees and grasses. What's on the sixth day of creation? Land animals and human beings, those who populate the dry land. So have you ever thought of the days of creation as two pairs of threes before? Isn't that interesting? Dif different way of looking at it. And on the sixth day of creation, after God created us, human beings, on the other days of creation, things were good. Sixth day of creation, God said, it was very good. Right? Why did God need us at all? That's a tough question. Why does God need us at all? Because he loves us. We are here to have a relationship with God. That's why we're here. And to protect what God created, which is the planet, which is the creatures and other human beings. Now, this may be of interest to some of you, maybe all of you. Yeah. Says in Genesis, what are we supposed to eat? Vegetables. <laughs> we are supposed to eat vegetables. That's what it says in Genesis. Yeah. So then after all of this, the three environments that Rabbi Kasuda described, and then the three populations of the environment, after that, God stopped working. Now, you'll see the translation even in the book that God rested. <laughs> Does God ever rest. God never rests. God never rests. The word Shabbat, which becomes Sabbath in English, really is to stop work. Because once the environments were created and once the environments were populated, God doesn't have to make any more. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. The rest is a relationship with us. We find in another place in the Bible, in many places in the Bible, where the Sabbath is described. Yeah. But one of the places, uh, it says, uh, and God created the Sabbath, and, and we worship the Sabbath for future generations. And it's a covenant between God and us. Because on six days God created the world, and it says in the Hebrew, and on the seventh day, Shavat v'yinefash. Tr literal translation, he Sabbathed. He ceased working, and he breathed. Mm -hmm. Now, does God have lungs? I don't think so. But here's how we talk about the relationship and why the celebration of the Sabbath is so vitally important. When God created human beings, molded a human being out of clay, what did God do with that human being? He breathed into it. Uh -huh. Breathed the breath of life into the human being. Although most translations say Adam, right? It's, it's Adam. It's a person coming out of the earth. God breathed in. So this is how intimate our relationship is with God, which is why the Sabbath is so important. Mm. God breathed into the human being. So when God breathes out, we breathe in. Hmm. And when we breathe out, God brings in. How intimate a relationship is that? Hmm. And I was taught this, what I'm going to share with you now, especially of, as we're talking about the Sabbath. Yeah. It's things you don't think about in life. How many of you are parents out there? Oh, most of you are parents. So when that baby's born, what's the first thing that happens outside of your wife saying, don't touch me? 
What is the first thing that we do with a baby? Slap the baby. Why do you want to slap the baby? Make him breathe in. Make him cry. Make him cry. Make him breathe in. Right? What's the last thing we do on this earth? Breathe out. We breathe out. So we don't think about that, but the number of breaths in in life equal the number of breaths out. It's one of those things we don't think about. And when we are giving up that last breath, who's receiving it? God. God. That's how intimate the relationship is with God. Wow. Is that a good start? I wish I could tweet that, but I'm sitting on stage. <laughs> and that was, have you all ever thought about that? That is fantastic. That is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So going, going back to what you talked about with the foundations of the Sabbath, yes. there, was, there was a book that I read um, on, called The Sabbath by Heschel. Um, Rabbi Heschel, he also wrote, I Asked for Wonder, his anthology. By the way, Great. are you aware that Heschel marched, marched with Martin Luther King? Yeah. 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 Marched in Selma with Martin Luther King. All right. <laughs> so this is the rabbi we're talking about here. <laughs> he refers to the Sabbath as a palace in time. Beautiful. We're, we're, no, we're actually God, we're, and he, what he suggested was that God literally stop time in order to rest or to create sort of, um, you know, like, so how different religions or different people that have beliefs, they go someplace special in order to renew their faith, to observe, or, you know, I think um, Muslims, they take the, the Hajj, you know, but what he was saying in his book was that God gave the Jews the Sabbath as a palace in time, so that it wasn't that they had to necessarily go to a place, but that he provided at creation that monument that they needed for refreshing with him. It's right. Uh, one of the issues we Jews deal with is anytime we build a building, somebody takes it away from us, <laughs> right? So the issue is not a holy space. For us, it's a holy time. And the Sabbath is the holy time. And if I could build on what you said, Pastor, God didn't create Sabbath just for the Jews. Right. All right? Are you with me on that? Yes. Nowhere in Genesis says, Jews only. Right? Anybody read that in the book? Not at all. It's for all of us. Yeah. So, got to do a little bit of history for you, because I think it's important. The word Jew, Jewish, doesn't occur in the five books of Moses comes later in history. The word Jew actually means descendant of the tribe of Judah. You know, there are 12 tribes. Yeah. The tribe of Judah, Yehuda in Hebrew. And those who are from that tribe are the Yehudim, the Jews. We're actually, Abraham is the first person called a Hebrew in the Bible. But God's resting on the seventh day predates Abraham. Yeah. Right? So I would like to share this with you. In the ancient world, the distinction was not Jew and anybody else, or even Hebrew and anybody else. It was believer and idolaters. And how do we know who the idolaters are in the Bible? They do things we don't recommend. Child sacrifice. Not a good thing. Not even if your kid's having a bad day. Right? <laughs> and it's not just child sacrifice. The idolaters put the child in the fire. And we know it happened because there are architectural, archaeological sites where there are children's bones at the base of idols. Mm. Not good. Sexual impropriety. Murder. So those who, were, who believed in a power of the universe greater than we are, and let's just deal with God as creator, because that's what we're talking about in Genesis. Anybody who believes in God as a creator gets to celebrate the Sabbath. Anybody who puts children in the fire, sexual impropriety, murder, uh, they don't get a break. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't happen for them. They have to work all the time. They got to work all the time. Yeah. And that's, that's a revolution in thought when you think there was a time where the idea of, of making a change in your schedule once every seven days, right? And it's not just to go play soccer. Are you with me on that? It, it is just, just, you know, watching football games, you know, college games. The idea being, it gives us a change in our schedule. Psychologically, how important is it to have a change in schedule? Hmm. Hugely important. Yeah. We need it psychologically. We needed a way to mark time. Now, I see there are a couple of women in the audience. Yeah. Can I talk to the women of the congregation? Sure. All right. Sure. What's very interesting is the Hebrew calendar 
is a lunar calendar, right? A Jewish month is every 28, 29 days, which is why a lot of Jewish holidays fall on the 15th of the month. Mm -hmm. Why the 15th? That's the full moon. That's the most light. It's modeled on women. How do you like that? It is modeled on women. Now, if you're keeping a, a lunar calendar, every so often you're going to get off schedule a bit. So they have to adjust it. It's a bizarre formula. Seven times every 19 years, we had a month. So it's not like we had, you know, February 29th. We have a 13th month in those years. But it's modeled on womenhood. Does that catch your attention? I'm going to take you another step, and then we're going to get back to the Sabbath, if I may. You're like, give me more of that. You know, the women are is like, this all right if we pursue that, that line? <laughs> all right. <laughs> this is one of my favorite things that I like to share. I believe that you can measure a society by the respect it shows its women. Uh, I don't hear any disagreements. <laughs> all right, you measure society on how it treats its women. Now, go with me on this. In the Western world, I'm separating up the, the, the Hebrew-speaking world for a reason. In the Western world, the world, anybody ever hear the word hysteria? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does that come from? This may surprise you. It's the same root word as hysterectomy. Mm. That women were hysterical. Right? In the Hebrew word, the word for womb it's not hysterical, it's rachem, which means compassion. Mm -hmm. So women are the source not only of life and future generations, but the source of compassion. How do you like that one? All right. So it's very interesting to me that the Hebrew calendar yeah. is aligned with women and women's cycles. Yeah. Very impressive, right? Absolutely. Especially when we're talking about the Sabbath, Sabbath rest, and relationship to God. And having that change in schedule is really important. Otherwise, one day is the next. Right? So we have the Sabbath. It gives us a time to, for rest, for reflection, to thank God for giving us this day of rest mm -hmm. and giving us life at all. Right? But here's where I like to go with it. It gives us time for our family, which is vitally important. And, you know, in the magazine, they talk about we're losing the Sabbath. I mean, that graphic is, if you haven't seen it, there's a graphic of the Ten Commandments, and they're sitting in sand, and the commandment that's... They haven't seen it. Oh, oops. oops. I was going to give it to them. Spoiler. After. Yeah, no problem. Spo spoiler alert. <laughs> the, the fourth commandment, the Sabbath, is obstructed. And for those who don't take that one day a week with their families, with their kids, they're losing something. Yeah. So... There, there is the story. So, you know, we, we be clear, Sabbath is for everybody. Now, let me ask you a question because, you know, we, the, a, a good majority of us, we keep, we sort of keep the Sabbath. All right. We, we kind of do it well. All right. But I wanted to get from At least you, you think about it, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Give me that. We, yes, sir. We wake up and know we need to be at church on Sabbath morning. All right. But I wanted to sort of get an indication from you as to how you um, celebrate the Sabbath. How you initiate the Sabbath? How do you start the Sabbath? What are the things that you do do on the Sabbath? What are the things that you don't do on the Sabbath? And then I'm going to ask you a very important question that some people, I don't want them to have to ask from the mic. I'm going to ask you about sex on the Sabbath because some of our members used to say that they can't have sex on the Sabbath. So I just wanted to not, not you know, just because that's going to be a question. So I met their pastor might as well ask instead of them going to the mic to ask. Which me. question do you want me to answer first? How I celebrated or the, sex? Save the sex one for we'll last. Save the sex. We'll keep their attention. They'll at least wait. We'll, we'll hold on to them longer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jewish events happen the night before. Because it says in Genesis, it was evening, it was morning. Mm -hmm. Day one, day two, day three. And that's why... The Sabbath begins Friday night at sunset, and it lasts till Saturday after sunset. Mm -hmm. And what's very interesting for me, again, we're going to be talking about women. We're not the sex part yet. We're just talking about the sal right. Sabbath. Right. We're still there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah, just, yeah. That women have the responsibility, and it's a, called a mitzvah, a good deed, a commandment, mm -hmm. that women light the Sabbath candles. Okay, women do that. 
And in a traditional home, they light two candles, not one. Now, why do they light two candles if it's one Sabbath? Because there's a difference between Exodus 20 and December 5th. December 5th. Deuteronomy 5. <laughs> I'm still doing Psalm 107.1. Yeah, you still do. Yeah, you still I'm still it. there. <laughs> but between Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5. Mark, I'm December 5th. I'm, yeah, Mark, why'd you tell him I'd go off script like this? <laughs> And the difference is on, on the fourth commandment in the, it, when, when the children receive the commandments from Sinai, it's a zachor, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh -huh. In Deuteronomy 5, it's shamor, it's to keep or protect or guard the Sabbath. So that's why there are two candles, one for remember and the other for to keep. Mm. And what women do, there's only one prohibition in the Torah. Torah is the five books of Moses. I just want to make sure I, I use words everybody understands. The five books of Moses. And there's only one Sabbath prohibition in the Torah, and that is you cannot make a fire on the Sabbath. Okay? Can't make, the Torah doesn't tell you why. It just says don't do it. There's certain laws in the Bible. There's 613, according to the rabbis, in the laws in the Torah and the five books of Moses. Some of them are obvious, thou shalt not kill, and I, I like the fact the book says it really is thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. Those are pretty obvious. You don't need a lot of disclosure on why you shouldn't do that. Then there are others that are commandments. Uh, they're all under the rubric of commandments, mishpatim, judgments. Don't move your neighbor's property line, right? Hmm. Don't uh, speak ill of the deaf. They can't hear you. Still don't do it. Don't put a stumbling block before the, in, for the blind. For the blind. So, so those get some explanation. But there are others called Hakim laws, and they're in there because I'm God, I said so. <laughs> and we still have to observe them. Yeah. All right? So the same thing, why can't you make a fire on the Sabbath? The Bible never says. I'll give you my, my impression of why in a little bit. It says don't do it. That's the only prohibition. So here we have a Friday night ritual where a woman lights candles. That's making a fire, right? Yeah. So the way we do it, usually a blessing comes before an action. All right? We bless the wine before we consume it. We bless the bread before we eat it. Mm -hmm. We bless washing our hands before we wash our hands. Really? Yeah. And for the Sabbath, you light the fire... Before sunset. Hmm. So you're not violating the Sabbath. Wow. And then the woman then does the prayer blessing the candles. Now what's very interesting is when a woman does this blessing over the candles, she covers her eyes. Why does she cover her eyes? So she doesn't benefit from the light. Huh. Then when it's Sabbath, she raises her, she's done the blessing, she raises her hand, and then there's the light. Hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Now, there are Friday night services, and in, in some communities, it gets into Kabbalism, which is the mystical side of Judaism. And I hope we have time to talk about that. Sure. And there are, but usually Friday night is a family night. Okay? We, so, we stop working, we celebrate the Sabbath together, and then the next morning, Saturday morning, we have services, morning services. And they follow up. Uh, Oh, let's do a little Kabbalah. Let's do a little Jewish mysticism, if I may, as long sure. as we're talking about the Sabbath. In the Jewish faith, and I think people of all faiths, we, every one of our major actions is infused by God's blessing. Right? So part of it is a little impulse control, but the other is we acknowledge, even in the workaday world, even putting on your clothes, you thank the Creator. Even for routine activities, we thank the Creator. So we go from the working world and infuse that with God. Hmm. Because the Kabbalists believe we live in form realms. The physical realm, we can infuse that with God. Then there is the emotional realm. And in a religious service, a Jewish service, we then read from Psalms, yeah. which talks about the majesty of God. And sometimes there's poetry written by humans. That's the emotional realm. Yeah. Then we go into the realm of the intellect, and in a Jewish service, that means reading from the Torah. So we do the, you know, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, Lord is one, which is Torah. You should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might, Torah. So we're reading from Torah, which is now 
the world of intellect from the Bible. Then we go into the intimate relationship with the world of God. Hmm. Call the world, in Hebrew, it's atzilus, nearness, because we believe God is near. God is not remote, God is near. And we have a private audience with God. Hmm. And on the Sabbath, we don't ask for anything. We do not ask for anything. The first, there's seven prayers in this relationship with God on the Sabbath. The yeah. first three are acknowledging all the wonderful aspects of God. God's connection to our ancestors, God's power, God's holiness. Yeah. One, two, and three. The fourth is the holiness of the Sabbath. I'm going to teach you a little more Hebrew because you're doing so well. The word holy in Hebrew is, is kadosh or kadosh. kodesh. And in variations, kuf dalit shen, which really means separate. Mm -hmm. what, why is separate holy? Because we're separating it from the profane. We're separating it from the everyday. We are creating a sacred space with that. That's the fourth. Fifth, six, sixth, and seventh are different ways of thanking God. So we praise God the whole, for three prayers, the holiness of the Sabbath, and then three prayers to thank God. And the last one, talk about universal. Mm -hmm. The last one is a prayer for peace. Is it a prayer for peace for just the Jewish people? No. Prayer for peace for everybody. Wow. Everybody. Yeah. Because it says in, in the Bible, there's one place you should love your neighbor as yourself. Right? For those of you who speak Hebrew. But a couple of verses later, it says, you will love the stranger as yourself. Hmm. Yeah. Bible says, there is one law for everybody. The Jews and the strangers. Everybody's under the same law. The Torah doesn't make a distinction. Matter of fact, we have a responsibility. It says we are responsible to take care of the women, the children, and the stranger in our midst. Yeah. All right? So it's universal, which is also a revolution. Absolutely revolutionary. The Bible, that what distinguishes the Bible from earlier law books, like the Code of Hammurabi, is the Code of Hammurabi was for the rich. The Bible's for us. For all of us. Okay? So that's among the ways. Gotcha. All right. Now, let me ask you a question. In, in, in your tradition, I, what, is the, what are the penalties or what are the consequences for um, violating the Sabbath? And sort of give me an idea how evolving technology impacts the oh. observance of the Sabbath. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. All right. You gave me that one. Oh, <laughs> I knew I liked it for some yeah. reason. All right. <laughs> Is violation of the Sabbath a, a capital offense? And that's problematic because in the Bible it says there was a man gathering sticks on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And Moses himself didn't know what to do with the man. He's only gathering sticks. Moses goes to God and God says, uh, don't want to be the one to tell you this, Moses. Yeah. He's got to be stoned. It's, it's a capital offense. We have certainly evolved. Other places in the Bible says if you don't observe this, the Sabbath, you're cut off from your people. Where the rabbis take this is... It's really easy in this world to forget a lot of stuff, yeah. right? But there's a world where we are going to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. Are you with me on that? And in, I love to, to get to talk about Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism, with your congregation here. The Hebrew word is olam haba, the world to come. And whatever you don't resolve here, you've got to explain yourself up there mm. in the world to come. So... Uh, it's not religion as punishment, but religious religion as thinking about what you're doing. Thinking about that connection to God. The thing that I'd like to talk about is people say, how many of you heard this, that religion divides people? Have you heard that? Mm -hmm. Couldn't be further from the truth. Couldn't be further. I'm going to teach you some English, which you probably know. Yeah. The word religion, right? The middle syllable of that word religion is lig, L-I-G. It's the same lig as ligament. Did you know that? What is a ligament? It's a connection. Right. It's a connection. So religion, people who are religious, are connecting. And what are they connecting to? Their families, their community, and God. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are designed to connect with each other. Are you with me on that? 
We're all designed to be connected to one another. So instead of thinking, well, this religion, that religion, that religion, no, no. Religion is connection. Okay? Gotcha. So technology has become an interesting thing that you, you pointed out. Yeah. Right? Bible says can't make a fire on the Sabbath. At the beginning of the 20th century, electricity is invented. What do we do with that? So the Jewish religion is, does not end with the Bible. It doesn't end with the rabbis at the time of Jesus. It doesn't even end with the rabbis 600 years later. It's an ongoing, it, how do you adapt yeah. for contemporary times? So when there's a, a, I'll give you an easy contemporary issue, and then we'll bring it back to the Sabbath and fire on the Sabbath. And sex, because we haven't. Fired. We'll get the sex. Yeah. I haven't forgot. All right. Is organ transplantation kosher? Hmm. Right? Bible could not have anticipated organ transplantation. Yeah. Is organ transplantation kosher? Yes. Uh, uh, there are a couple of exceptions. Can you put a pig valve in an Orthodox Jew? Yes. Really? Yes, because you're not eating it. And you're not touching it. Not touching it. Because hmm. the message of Deuteronomy is you will choose life that you may live. I place before you today good and evil, life and death. You will choose life. Mm. All right? So the Bible couldn't have anticipated organ transplantation. There was, you know, had a sad outcome. There was an Israeli astronaut who was very religious, right? And religious Jews do prayers three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening. Well, you're in outer space. You get morning, afternoon, and evening roughly every two hours, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So the man would never be working. He'd be praying all the time. <laughs> Right. Morning prayers, evening prayers, afternoon prayers, morning prayers, afternoon, evening prayers. So they went to the rabbis and they said, from outer space, you can't measure it by, by sunset because the sun's setting every three hours, right? Something like that. Mm. So here's what the decision was, and it brings us back to our topic. Sabbath can only happen once every seven days, not once every seven sunsets. Hmm. Right? Yeah. And they determined that where are the astronauts in communication with the Earth? Anybody know? Mm -mm. In Houston. Uh -uh. Right? Houston tracks the satellites. So the hour of the day and the Sabbath are determined on Houston time. Wow. So that's one of the modern, modern issues. Turning the lights on. Bible doesn't talk about electricity. What do you do? Well, the rabbis met and they said, you know, when you flick a switch, there is a spark. If a spark is fire, you can't do that. Wow. So you can't make fire. What about the microwave? Microwave, too. So what they've had, what's really interesting, with modern technology, yeah. you'll, you'll go into buildings, even in synagogues, even observant synagogues, and the, you want people to be there. You want people to be in community. Uh -huh. You want them to be there, and if the synagogue has multiple levels, the older people can't do the stairs. Mm. So what they have are what are called, what are called Sabbath elevators, huh. right? The elevator will stop on every floor. One of the greatest boons to modern Jewish practice is the slow cooker oven. Oh. Slow cooker oven, right? So you turn it on before Friday night Sabbath. before sunset, put your, put your food in it, let it stew all night, and then you can have a hot meal the next day. Now, one of the things, I've talked about you know, the importance of women. When you look at the fourth commandment and read all the words, even the fine print, mm -hmm. it says, remember the Sabbath day, you will do no matter of work. I'm, I'm see people pay attention. All right? Not you, not your son, not your daughter, not your manservant, not your maidservant, not your ox, not your ass. Mm-hmm. Who's left out of the list? Your wife. Oh, yeah, okay. All right? I'll do it slowly. You shall do no matter work. Not you, not your son, not your daughter, not your manservant, not your maidservant, not your donkey, not your, you know, ox, not your ass. So the rabbis have a problem with that. <laughs> so they've said, well, when it says you shall do no matter of work, that means women included shall do no matter of work. Ah. But then there's the more practical side. You gotta eat. Gotta eat. And then they went even further. The, the 
The Torah only says thou shalt not make a fire on the Sabbath. There's a thing called Talmud, which was a book of Jewish law. In fact, there are two Talmuds. There was one that came out of Babylonia, the Babylonian Talmud, and one out of Jerusalem, the Jerusalem Talmud. So the rabbis said, well, this has got to be, it can't just be don't make a fire. And they discovered 39 tasks related to building the tabernacle, and those are prohibited. Mm -hmm. So it's not all work, just the work related to making the tabernacle, which includes sewing, woodwork. Now here's, here's one that's interesting, and the rabbis are still hitting their head over it. It says in the Talmud, among those lists of prohibitions on the Sabbath, you shall not write two letters, I mean, not letters to your, your folks, I mean, two separate letters of the alphabet, hmm. and you shall not destroy two letters of the alphabet. Hmm. Hmm. So then a question came up, can you eat three M&Ms? I'm going to go over there. <laughs> <laughs> now you want to talk about sex. <laughs> Yeah. All yeah, right. Yeah, before we run out of time, yes. We, oh. we, we have to get to, and then, and then I'm going to have, have one more question for you. All right. You. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but we, we can get to that part. Or the m and We can finish the m and m and ms were done. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, so I think a lot of us, as we were, uh, as we were raised in the church, and people always ask me this question. Mm -hmm. Pastor, can me and my, can we have sex on the Sabbath? And my response is always, I mean. Yes. Is it work? You know, is it, you know, because they use that don't do your own pleasure on the Sabbath, of course, that's about economics and stuff yeah. like that. But, you know, so uh, from the Jewish perspective, someone told me a rumor one time, and I want to hear if this rumor is correct. They told me that in, in, uh, in the Jewish community, as they are bringing in the Sabbath, they believe that as uh, the Sabbath is one of the um, covenants that God gave to us, the other one was marriage. Yes. And that when they bring in the Sabbath, they should also re-establish their covenant of marriage yes. together. Is that true? That is absolutely I true. I want to be Jewish. Anybody <laughs> want to be Jewish? Yeah, hallelujah. You, know, you hear that, Denise? You know the old yeah. story? <laughs> Congregants went to the rabbi and they said, is sex work or pleasure? The rabbi thought about it. He said, it's pleasure. How do you know it's not work? They said, if it was work, we'd hire somebody else to do it. And on that note... <laughs> My last question. I mean, we have so much more to talk about, there, but we have, we have children in here. Uh, oh. and, the, and the young boys in this corner, they're like, oh, tell us more. Tell us more. Yeah. But actually, uh, uh, let me get religious again. The, the celebration of the Sabbath is we are uh, attendants of a marriage between God and the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And marriage and the Sabbath are linked. Yeah. Yeah. And Judaism is not a religion of asceticism. We are to enjoy life. We, we are enjoy what God gives us, because it is a gift. Yeah. yeah. And the last, last question I have for you. Um, you didn't like the answer to the work question, did you? The what? The work question? The work. Yeah, that was great. I'm going right. to use that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm going I'm to use that. As Seventh-day Adventists um, who keep the <laughs> Sabbath, what are some things that you could tell us um, that you think people miss? If you can just give us a few things in, in closing. What do you think people miss about the Sabbath? You mean by not doing the Sabbath? No, no, what do you think by, that people miss about it? Like you mentioned some things earlier about it being our connection to God, but what, what are some of the things that, you know, people who may not observe the Sabbath, or even those that do observe the Sabbath, that maybe not do it understanding that, you know, because you even mentioned that, you, that, that, that um, Jews, as they keep the Sabbath, they don't ask for anything. Correct. Well, a lot of us, we come to church on Saturday and we bring our burdens and we ask in God for all kind of stuff on the Sabbath. So what are some of the things that you think we, you know, people miss on the Sabbath? Okay, we're going to go real Kabbalistic on you. <laughs> that the Sabbath, the reason why we don't ask for anything on the Sabbath is it's God's day. It is God's day. It is our closest connection to God. Mm -hmm. Not that we're not connected with God on a Tuesday or a Thursday. We're connected with God when we rise, when we sleep, we're yeah. always connected with God. But if we acknowledge that this is God's day, then we don't need anything. Why don't we need anything? We have God. Wow. Huh. Right? Wow. wow. And, we think, and we think of the Sabbath as our return to the Garden of Eden. Wow. Mm -hmm. when God took care of everything. Wow. So that's the Sabbath. And I, I, I believe in taking little steps before big steps. If people yeah. just say, acknowledge there's a Sabbath. That's a great start. Yeah. That it's not just another day. It is a Sabbath. It's a change. 
They may say, I don't have time to go to church. I don't have time to do this. I don't have to do that. But if we start just by acknowledging the Sabbath, we're already there. Yeah. Then if we give ourselves time to thank God for we got through the week, Amen. right? Mm -hmm. Thank God for our children, because I see these beautiful kids around here. Boy, you make beautiful children in this congregation. Yeah. I can only take credit for one of them, though. Okay. <laughs> Thank God for our relationships with our friends, our family, and our spouses. Yeah. And if we can do that, then we are fulfilling God's purpose, because that's why God, God doesn't need us. God wants us. Yeah. Right? And the least we can do is want God back. Yeah. Yeah. So if we can do that. So I can understand in certain religious practices, maybe this is the only time you have to be with God and say, God, well, I got your attention. Mm. But if I could, if you could, maybe on the next Saturday, just think about the fact, instead of just thinking of this as our, our, our moment of, of the, being in the Garden of Eden, where mm. we don't have a need, we are with God. That's what I offer. Come on, let's put our hands together. Did you all get anything from that? Come on, let's thank Rabbi Levin. I want to thank you uh, on behalf of the entire congregation for sharing your wisdom. If you're, if you're here for uh, the first time or you want to know a little bit more about the Sabbath, we do have um, some magazines that we want to give you. Uh, they're entitled A Day to Remember. Uh, as, you, as you know that um, uh, Ra Rabbi Levin's uh, presentation was entitled uh, Remember and Observe, Two Commandments for the Sabbath. The magazine is just called The Day to Remember. They'll be over here on top of the piano. Uh, Rabbi, would you stay maybe about 10 minutes to shake folks' hands? And... I'd be honored. All right, all right. So Rabbi Levin will be down here in the front. Uh, come on and, and, and pay him a visit. Let him know uh, that you were grateful for him coming. Uh, tomorrow, or not tomorrow, we, will be, we won't be back together until Wednesday night. What day did I say? So if you come tomorrow, the church will be locked. Wednesday night, we have a very powerful testimonies from two incredible women as they talk about their struggles uh, with breast cancer. You don't want to miss it. I guarantee you, um, for those of you who were here yesterday and for those of you who were here tonight, uh, this series is something that's going to be impactful for all of us. Don't just come by yourself. Bring somebody with you. Is that all right? Let's stand together as we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for... Uh, the ministry of Rabbi Levin. Father, we ask that you continue to be with him, that you continue to enlighten his mind, that you be with his comings and his goings, Lord. We, act, we ask that you act above him, Lord God, looking down over him, beneath him, holding him up, behind him, pushing him ever forward, and in front of him, leading the way, Father. We thank you for everyone that has come. We thank you for this new understanding that we have of the Sabbath, not a time for us to lay our burdens down or to just come to church, but to experience Eden with you. Father, we can't wait until the next Sabbath where we can enter into your presence. Lord, we love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. Amen, amen. Have a good night. We'll see you on Wednesday night.